whole world, 95% parrots, all of us. And I don't think I'm accepted from that. This is nowhere near milk, all right? And so, and we're all just trying to figure this thing out together, right? It is massively complex. It is massively complex. But yeah, th this doesn't, it doesn't get more complex than this. I don't even care about infralapsarianism versus superlapsarianism. I don't even care about um, eschatology. None of those, all of those pale in comparison to what we're talking about right now. And we're paving the road. We're not even, uh, we're not even... It's not even like we have, uh, y you know, every other topic, seriously, every other topic we talk about, we get to run to Paul Washer, John Piper, John MacArthur, 5 million commentaries, and figure out what they have to say about it. And then we all like formulate our ideas around what others have told us, right? This entire process, we've just been reading the word and talking to each other. And... That's good, but it makes it harder, right? Because there aren't set down lines, priorities, parameters. We're talking about the intersection between theology and politics, and none of us are virologists. You, you know what I mean? This is incredibly complex. Incredibly complex. And we're just working through it together. And, and I appreciate everyone's thoughts and opinions. I do. Especially ones that challenge my own. Especially ones that challenge my own. From everything I can tell, this looks pretty scary, right? But I'm running around and asking questions and I'm picking up answers from multiple sources. Which numbers can be trusted? What percentage is safe or unsafe? How can we compare the loss of people's lives? When does the risk or reward of people getting sick balance out with people losing their livelihoods all of these are massively complex questions with a variety of information some of which is to be trusted some of which isn't to be trusted and then i try to bring up a discussion earlier in the week on okay guys when should we open up do we just listen to uncle sam or do we not i don't know the answers i don't and I found about a hundred Bible verses that are referent, um, reference, that are relevant. This is iron sharpening iron. It's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be simple. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to be difficult. It's going to hurt. Paring off the rough edges hurts. And we're all experiencing it. You know what? You know what's not good? We don't talk about these topics because it makes people's feelings hurt that's not good that's not iron sharpens iron that's let's avoid things and just play more valorant right and don't get me wrong you guys know i like playing valorant but let's just avoid things and play more valorant is not the right answer this is really really good stuff and it yeah it hurts it's difficult um it's a struggle it's a trial all that type of stuff but it's good stuff this is great for us Martin says, I'm on the same page as Vector when it comes to, should we reopen the churches right now? No, I don't think we should. But I can't say that opinion is based on an objective standard that I could apply consistently, that I could apply to the next virus that comes around. I appreciate that we're digging into this and try to come up with consistent and reasoned responses. Exactly. Thank you, Martin. And that's all I've been trying to do. Yeah. that's And that's been my concern a lot of this time, Martin, is by what standard, right? By what standard? What are the principles that are at play in this? I make a lot of assumptions. Do you get, were you guys in here when we were reading C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity? Remember when he said that like 90% of what we believe is based upon authority? He's right. C.S. Lewis says that like 90% of what we believe is based upon authority, right? He says that in Mere Christianity. And I think he's dead right. Um, I think a perfect, the example he gives is he says, I believe there is a place that is New York. I believe there is such a place called New York and that people live there. And he goes, but why do I believe it? I've never been there. I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. I believe it solely on the authority, on the testimony of others. And he says, the vast majority of things you believe in your life, you believe because of that. The authority of others, the testimony of others. 
That's why he believes in New York. And if you think about it, there are many, many places that I've not been across the entire world. I, I love that concept of, let me ask questions. Let me do some research for myself. Let me dig into it. We act like we're so confident, right? So, so let, let's, let's, all, let's bring all this back. This is part of my thought process that leads into the coronavirus questions, right? So I have uh, coworkers. Hey, Richard, how you doing? Good to see you. I have coworkers who are like going on and on about viruses and, you know, what their transmission rate is and um, how many people are infected and how deadly they are. And there's all these graphs and charts, right? This one would have infect this many people at six feet away and this one and that one and that one. And, and, but here's my point. Here's my point. All that might be true. I don't know. I don't know if it's true or if it's not right. But here's my point. I've got coworkers who don't know anything about medicine, don't know anything about science, coming to me now like they're virologists, like they're medicine and science experts because they read one article in the New York Times because the Washington Post posted a little graphic. And now everybody's an expert on viruses, right? And they get to come in, well, this thing is this deadly and its transmission rate is this. And if you multiply this by NC squared, then, and I'm like, how do you know any of that stuff? How do you actually know it? You don't. You're a parrot. You're just a parrot. All you're doing is parroting what you hear other people tell you. Let me step this back again. How many of our churches are just full of parrots? Little John Piper parrots? Little, dare I say it, Paul Washer parrots? We don't actually experience these things for ourselves. We don't actually know the one true living God. We just know that John Piper seems to know him. And I like how John Piper talks. And we fill all our churches with little reformed parrots who get to fly around and rock, 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 rock. This, this is theology that I believe. This is theology. And who actually dug into it for themselves, read the scriptures, got on their knees, prayed, asked God to demonstrate to me what is true. No, you just read your favorite author. You just read your favorite theologian. You just listened to your favorite pastor and you believed him. That's it. Whole world, 95% parrots, all of us. And I don't think I'm accepted from that because I have all my favorite guys. I like to parrot, right? When are we going to start thinking for ourselves, guys? When are we going to start asking real questions and seek out the answers on our knees and in the word? Rather than my first place being to turn to some theology textbook, rather than me getting a smattering of systematic theologies to try and answer all my questions. That's kind of what I like about this question. Every time I'm tempted to turn away from Luke 2, Romans 13, Isaiah 3, Hosea 13, Jeremiah 27, Daniel 6, Daniel 3, Acts 4, Leviticus 13, Hebrews 10, Exodus 3, Proverbs 21. Every time I'm tempted to turn away from the word and run to my favorite theologian, to run to my favorite pastor, for them to give me all the answers, there aren't any there. There are no answers anywhere. And it's kind of nice because I'm forced to do what I know we're supposed to be doing this whole time. I'm forced to rely on the word. I'm forced to rely on my knees. I'm forced to rely on the God of heaven rather than all of these awesome, brilliant men he's made. We're just a bunch of parrots, guys. And I don't know when we'll stop being parrots. I don't know when. I'm probably a parrot right now. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm convinced of. I'm convinced we need to think for ourselves. I'm convinced we need to read the word. He gave us brains. He gave us his word. He gave us the Holy Spirit. What more do we need? And let's read. Let's think. Let's pray together in all of our endeavors, in Twitch streaming endeavors, in understanding the word endeavors, in Bible endeavors, in everything. Let's leverage all of our talents, skills, abilities, everything he has given us so that we might glorify and honor him and spread the gospel. I can't help but preach. I'm a preacher. And, and again, I, I want you to know, I'm preaching to myself this whole time. I'm just as much. I'm not on here criticizing anybody else. I'm just as much at fault here, guys.
But I know we can come together on these things. I know we can. I know I love the community that we've found on here. I know God has given us to each other to spur one another on, to challenge, to encourage, to hope, to exhort. All of these things. Hey guys, Pastor Tanner here. I hope you enjoyed that video. Likes and subscribes are always appreciated. And if you scroll down to the description, you can join our Twitch or our Discord where we would love for you to plug into our community. Take care. God bless. Bye now.